I'll explain it like this. He's still trying to use a World War II plane. I'm over uh, here. Uh, I'm over here in an F-22. <laughs> I am Kirk Vandergrass, uh, Boise, Idaho. I'm down at the uh, Republican Committee uh, summer summer meeting, uh, meeting uh, members of uh, the legislature. Uh, the Attorney General, the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, uh, lots of members of the Republican Party, uh, trying to rub elbows, get to know people, because some of these people I'm going to be have to, you know, directly speaking with in, in what we do. So I'm here to get to know people. Yeah, I'm Tony Pellegrino. I'm here supporting my friends in the legislature here over in uh, Idaho. and. Uh Thanks for uh, interviewing us, Adam. Good to see you, bro. For the second time. Anyway, uh, I, the reason that I'm interviewing these two gentlemen, Kirk and Tony, is not because they're here as Republican Party activists, but because these guys are the kind of legal wizards in the tradition of Mark Stevens who use every legal angle possible to keep the government from going after innocent people and from holding the government and, and, and going after government, holding individuals accountable in government when they overstep their authority, which is, does that, does that happen very often? Only on days at NNY. Right. That, those are the only days I smoke pot, by the way. Um, so you guys have done a lot of incredible work over the years uh, in, in educating yourselves and helping other people. First, I just want to know, how did you get started on this path of legal wizardry? What motivated you and, and got you to the point where you're able to do this full time and, and really help so many people with your work? Yeah, for me, it was, it was a bogus traffic stop by, by uh, a, a bad cop who was giving me crap, who was trying to humiliate me. And uh, I says, you know what, I'm going to fight this. And I ended up fighting it and, and winning. And I was surprised how easy it was to win. So I realized I had a knack for this. Then I started helping other people with their bad faith, bogus uh, you know, fees and fines and bad faith pros prosecutions and help them win too. And so I just started getting self-educated and actually I, I win all the time or help people win all the time. So it's been an exciting ride. For me, uh, back in 1985, I was the child that was kidnapped by CPS of state of Washington. Uh, so I, I got a little bit of a firsthand taste at 14 years old, uh, how these people lie and the corruption within government. And then as an adult, uh, got into trouble, which I really shouldn't have been in trouble. I mean, I was driving without a license when I'm... <gasps> Oh my goodness, <laughs> license being a per seeking permission to do a thing that would otherwise be illegal and when we have the right of liberty, personal liberty, you know, uh, how is that a crime? Where's the injured party? But anyway, I, I, I found out about the corruption in the system even more and, you know, when, when you have people that say, hey, you know, uh, if you don't take this plea bargain over here, we're going we're gonna to put you away for a long time even though, you know, you already know that you beat it. I mean, it, but this particular instance I had, uh, but I didn't know enough about the law how to effectively defend myself. So uh, I made a vow to myself that I would start studying the law in 1995 that, you know, I'm not going to get screwed like this again. And so that's where I started and I started studying law and I'm not going to do That's not going to happen to me again. And Tony, what's your organization? Tell us about the seminars that you host. It's the American Common Law Academy and I host constitutional seminars. And I teach people how to basically view the law through the lens of the Bill of Rights, specifically about 10 of them, and, uh, and then what to do when they are violated, because they're violated on a daily basis. If you're anywhere out in the public, you know, you'll have a public official that, that will infringe upon those rights, you know, because, you know, we're being accused by things that are called misdemeanors and crimes, and the definition of a crime is there has to be one of the people who are causing uh, injury, harm, and loss to one of the other people with criminal intent. So how is driving 15 miles an hour over the speed limit considered a crime if you don't show up for your hearing, all of a sudden they can pull you over and arrest you and tow your car and impound you, and it just becomes a nightmare. So uh, just teach people their rights and how to assert, assert, uh, assertively defend yourself and win. And Kirk, it's Kirk's Law Corner, and you do individual consulting for cases, correct? No, we, we, actually what we do is uh, free education online, Facebook. Uh, some of our videos we upload to uh, Kirk's Law Corner YouTube channel. Uh, there's also the e Clause, the gentleman I work with. He's a, a co-host on the show, and then we have John Gentry as well. Uh, but there's also e Clause LLC group. Sometimes he goes live through there. But uh, 
We're, we're, we're quite the team. John's kind of busy right now. He's going to be running for Tennessee Senate. Uh, so it's down to just Chris and I, Wednesdays and Friday nights, you know, 6.30 to 8.30, 9.00 p.m. Uh, mountain time. So we just provide education, what, are, what your rights are, where they come from, law, and how to effectively defend them. And the easiest way is to look for Kirk's Law Corner on Facebook, yeah? Yes, thank you. And website you want to plug, Tony? No, I don't have a website. I'm pretty much under the radar, but... It's possible. I know things that aren't on the internet do exist. Uh, but gentlemen, I want to, I want, you know, we have a lot of people in our audience who, you know, are, are absolutely on board with anything you can do to fight government power. And what I think would be helpful for them or the general audience would be the, the actual practical lessons that, that you've learned from your work that you would want to give them as, as general advice, just operating in society, asserting their rights. So what's the most important thing that you would want to share with someone if you could boil down all of your years of research onto a three by five card and say, this is what you need to carry around. This is what the, the awareness that you need to have. Um, keeping people accountable, a lot of times when, when, when you look someone into the eye and say, what is your name and official job title, and you begin to write down their name because they do have a sworn and subscribed oath of office that they swear to and they sign that document, and, and it's literally felony perjury if they violate their oath of office, and just look, look them dead in the eye and ask them what their name and official job title is, and you have a right to remain silent. Be the one to asking the questions. You're not required to uh, answer any questions, and this is a trick question that I like to teach that people, say you get pulled over or someone's knocking at your door, and, and you can ask them this question to any public official. Are you required to uphold my fourth and fifth amendments of the Constitution, yes or no? And it's a bit of a trick question because if they said yes, they're required to uphold that, those amendments and say, I have nothing else to say to you right now. Okay, or are you arresting me or detaining me? And if they say no, then say, well, then if you have an oath of office, you're, you're uh, guilty of felony perjury of your oath. And if you don't have an oath of office, now you're impersonating a public official, which is a felony. So I need to know what felony I'm gonna charge you with. So put them on the defense, look them dead in the eye. Uh, you don't try to educate these public officials. They have a sworn and subscribed oath of office. Everything they say and do could be used against them in a federal court of law. For me, it's what articulable and reasonable suspicion do you have that I have committed a crime that's an arrestable offense without a warrant? And then from there, you shut up. Do you have a warrant or not? If you don't have a warrant, then you can't make an arrest. And thoughts on recording interactions with government officials? Oh, yes. Always record. And then another thing you can do is immediately ask them, hey, is, is your recording working? Your audio equipment, audio, video equipment working? <laughs> is it on? Is it working? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, nothing to do. Come on, guys. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> We're going to get through this, I promise. Right, right. So, uh, no, that's actually a legitimate question because at uh, this particular point in time in, in where we're at in history now is that they're required to have body cams, audio and video, uh, because of some of the corruption that's going on. And, uh, you know, they also try to use that to remember what you said because they're there to interrogate you. Believe it or not, trust me, they are there to interrogate you and get whatever questions they can out of you to admit any kind of guilt of any kind. They're there just to dig. They're, you know, looking for gold. Anything they can do, use against you to extort you for money. So with what you said, Tony, when you said, like, you, be, you have the right to remain silent, but you're saying ask questions, I think, I think it's worth pointing out, and if, 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 let me know if you disagree with this, that remaining silent doesn't literally mean going mute necessarily. And I've done that before when you're the weirdo who doesn't interact, but you can still be polite and engaged. And it's, it's better to take charge of the conversation. Yes. And the first Amendment, but also the First Amendment is your right of, of, of the freedom of speech or the freedom not to speak. So I even come at a, at a First Amendment right, which is also your, your right to record. And you'd be surprised how dumb some of these public officials are when you pull out your, your camera and they're knocking on your door and you say, excuse me, sir, how long have you been trespassing on my property? <laughs> they're, they're liable to say, oh, about 10 minutes, you know? Yeah. And so, so yeah, you, you have a freedom of not to speak and answer questions, but you have the right to ask them questions because they're your employee. So you need to introduce public officials to their boss, which is you.
Yeah. Oh, right. I love it. That, that attitude of taking charge. I think that's really important. You guys are both really solid on that, right? No disagreement there. But really. I understand within the legal wizardry community, there's some factions. There's some disagreement on on approaches. If if you guys, I know you want to stand together and fight in government, but there's there's, there's you guys have both taken two distinct that's different approaches, right? On this one. Yeah, I'm more traditional. I, I just uh, I, I like to teach people how to. Uh, Take your take your uh, your case to federal court, you know, for deprivation of civil rights. It's 42 U.S.C. 42, Section 1983. Two elements: is somebody acting under color of law, and did they violate guaranteed and protected rights uh, under your state and federal constitution? Kirk's more cutting edge, and, and and I'm starting to learn some of the some of the methods that he's working on, and I'll let him explain that. So what we teach at E.E. Claus on Kirk's Law Corner there is there's, there's a process that's due to public servants. It's a different process than, than what's due to your fellow man. So a lot of people aren't aware of this, and it's, it, I myself was not aware of it until I met Christopher Hallett, CEO of E.E. Claus. And I'm like, what, what do you mean there's rules of procedure in the House and the Senate? Because the First Amendment specifically states you have the right to petition the government for the redress of grievances. Article 1, Section 10 of the Idaho Constitution specifically states you petition the legislature for the redress of grievances. So it's called a petition of remonstrance in the form of remonstrance. So the remonstrance process and remonstrance itself means you're challenging bad policy or bad actors in government because that's the process that's due to them. They're bound by that process in the Constitution. We, the people, aren't necessarily bound by that process other than as a social compact. And anyone else that's bound by that, that's the process that's due to them. So that, you know, when we don't follow due process, I mean, we complain about how they don't follow due process, right? Then we get all upset, you're violating my rights, you're not following due process. Well, when we're not following due process of law, why aren't we getting angry at ourselves? So. Again, this is something new that I've learned within the last couple of years and steadily have been learning this over, over the last couple of years as well. So, you know, this is something new to me as well. Uh, but the fact is, is we've had some success with this. We've, we've, Ector County, Texas, we've had a judge removed from the bench, uh, abolished the entire family court of magistrate division of, of Ector County, Texas. And then uh, in December, that was February of 2018, and then December, of 2018, over 1,250 cases was dismissed because of that. Because of all the scheme, scam, and fraud that was going on in that court, nobody showed up in December of 2018 to argue those cases. So over 1,250 cases were dismissed through this process. So, you know, the, the key is, is it's, it's not so much that, I'll explain like this. He's still trying to use a World War II plane I'm over uh, here. I'm uh, over here in an F-22. So he's trying to be nice, call it traditional. I, by the way, I don't think there's it's anything not, traditional it's, it's about not, suing the I'm, government I'm like gonna, this. I'm going to say that it's not that it doesn't work, but in the in the well, John still John Church standard in World War II. But anyways, go ahead. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, okay. So the the thing is, is like what we have in in the practitioner judicial report, uh, John Gentry's auditor's compilation report. 97.6% of pro se litigants, Title 42 cases are automatically dismissed. But they're not my people's. Okay, go ahead. But this is the problem in history and what we're trying to actually expose is the, is the corruption in the judicial branch. And this is the scheme, scam, and fraud that's been purported on the people. And the bar has come in and said, oh, you have to go to the judicial branch for your grievances. You come over here. Oh, and if, if you got a complaint about a judge, you file it with the Judicial Accountability Board. If you got a complaint about a bar member, you got to go to the bar and complain over here. Well, that's where you get the membership card. It's not a license, it's a membership card to an association. Yep. And they're embedded in the judicial branch. In our form of government, which we have three pillars of law, the legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch. Only the executive branch has the power to issue licenses. Right? I mean, you get your driver's license, from the DMV. You get your daycare license from the Department of Health and Welfare. You go to the executive branch to get licenses. So why are they saying you got to have a license to practice law, and yet all it is is an association like the National Rifle Association? Does the National Rifle Association hand out licenses? Mm -hmm. Do they hand if out? If only. <laughs> right, right. I mean, you know, this is an outside entity. It's not, it's, I mean, it, it may be a corporation. It's an association, right? Like AAA, right? Do they hand out licenses? No. Can you name any other association on the face of this planet that hands out licenses? 
I can't. Of course not, right. It's a very unusual special so space they've carved out for themselves there. Right. And so this is the huge scheme, scam, and fraud. And again, Black's Law Dictionary. Look up confidence man. Confidence trickery. And uh, Sham Law. Sham Law's in there too. Kangaroo Court is Tobacco in there. Kangaroo Courts. <laughs> you know, it's a confidence trickery scheme, scam, and fraud. So for people who want to get started on this path, what would you recommend for them in, in research? Uh, Black's Law Dictionary, of course, to start, uh, as, as Anthony knows. You know, there's some good videos uh, online. Look at a creator endowed rights. They're kind of boring, um, but it talks about how write a, writing a lawful notification letter, which, you know, a lot of victories is to stay out of court. So you put people on notice saying, you know what, I have to notify you before I sue you, but, it w but to avoid litigation and adjudication in this matter, I'd like to be open for good faith negotiations. So it's called Creator Endowed Rights Series Lawful Notification Letters, um, uh, Affidavit of Status, know who you are and, and how the law applies to you, St status and jurisdiction. We are not corporations. Don't treat me like a corporation. Don't seize my bank account without due process, okay? Who are you and how the law applies to you? Those are two simple things that you need to figure out. And so the best way to connect with you guys, we got Kirk's Law Corner on Facebook. And you, you got a website? No, I got the American Common Law Academy on Facebook too. I don't have a web page yet, so okay. sorry. Well, believe it or not, there are things that exist outside the internet. And it's great that these guys are doing this work. Any final thoughts, anything you want to share with the audience, guys? Uh, you, you asked about reading. Uh, where I recommend and, and direct some people to go to is, is avalon.yale.edu. And you can go in there and look at, at documents, hysterical doc. I mean, historical documents, from, from clear back to ancient, like 400 BC type stuff. But I recommend starting somewhere around 600. Read a little bit in there. And then uh, 1215 with the Magna Carta. Then get into the, uh, <coughs> excuse me. What's the Freedom School, Texas? What was that Texas one? Freedom School .com. Um, but the avalon.yale.edu, that has actual documents in our history. And if you understand how a nation is created, and our nation is called America, you have to understand what the law of the nation is before you can understand anything else. So what, what are your rights? What is the law of this nation? Because that's hierarchy, right? You've got to start up here. So you can find those documents and go right around that 1700 mark and start reading in there. And you'll get to things like July 6, 1775, the Declaration for the Causes and Necessity of Taking Up Arms. That's in the First Continental Congress. Then you have, you know, the Virginia Declaration of Rights. That's the theoretical foundation of all government for this nation called America. Then you have the Virginia Constitution, the Lee's Resolution, the Declaration of Independence, Articles of Confederation. Read all that stuff so you, you can comprehend what your rights are and what the actual words that lay down the law. Because it's all there. I think we need to change our culture in this country, okay? And the reason, that the, the way we do this is standing up for ourselves. You know in here when your rights are being violated, when you're being railroaded. So every time you stand up and call them on the carpet, I think is a victory whether you win or lose. Stand up for yourself, and, and this is another thing. There's wisdom in a multitude of counselors. Don't think because you're shelling out $15,000 for an attorney that you're in good hands. You know, do your homework draw from different sources, uh, you're always obtaining evidence. In your event, get everybody's name and official job title, uh, take notes, uh, always record, and like I said, consult with a, a, a multitude of counselors and always manage your attorneys every time. Okay, so this interview is a great way for people who have never heard of any of these ideas to get started. And, and, and I want to say that there are people who do this kind of work all over the country because there are enough people who have been screwed over and then have been determined enough to say, I'm going to figure out how to stop this. And what they've given you just now is a great primer on how to assert your rights and a window into what's possible legally. So I want everybody to know that you don't have to be an expert yourself. You don't have to go through the years of, of self-training and self-education that these gentlemen have. But if you get into a situation where you've asserted your rights and you've gone screwed over, or in any way your rights have been violated and you want to proactively go after government officials like with a federal lawsuit, that you can find someone like this. Again. Kirk's Law Corner and American Common Law Academy.
So find someone like this, one of these legal wizards. I mean, I, I, how, how many people like, I know if, if, if you guys include yourselves in this category, how many, how many people around the United States would you say are, are your kind of, I, I say what, legal ninjas? I don't know, is there a term you guys like for yourselves? Probably about probably four or 500 of us in the, in the entire country. I don't run into a whole lot of them. Well, and four then, or for, for us, for us, there's nobody else teaching what we're teaching. Right. Everybody's got a unique angle, and you guys are doing some really amazing pioneering work, especially the Hector County stuff. Well, the, the thing is, is like the petition of remonstrance has never been done in Idaho. I've already been down here, looked in the archives, had them double checked. There's just, it's never been done in Idaho. Uh, John Gentry checked in Tennessee. 1850 was the last time a petition of remonstrance was done. So we're talking 100 and, you know, 150 some years ago. Well, Four or five hundred people throughout the country, that means that there is a resource that's better than any lawyer out there of individuals like these guys who care about defending your rights no matter what, and they're not going to let the Bar Association or legal precedent get in the way when an injustice has been committed. And I hope in that spirit that you will join them in that effort. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Appreciate gentlemen. it. Adam vs. The Man is made possible with support from SmartCash. Check out smartcash.cc to find out more about this powerful, business-focused cryptocurrency that is fast, easy to use, and community-centric. SmartCash is designed to be securely used for day-to-day -day transactions and put the currency back in cryptocurrency.